Hello everyone and welcome to this week's newsletter. Planning for the 2025 school year has been underway for some months now. This is a long and complex process involving students selecting their subjects and elective preferences, processing staff teaching load requests and finalising timetable blockings along with the timing of VET offerings. Of course we have an additional layer of complexity which comes from our relationship with Sacred Heart College involving matching our schedules and timetable. This relationship of course is enormously beneficial. It allows us to run subjects where only a handful of students at each school choose them. It creates economies of scale in putting together class sizes and particularly for us it creates a co-ed element in the most senior year levels when students have the maturity to benefit from it. I'm pleased to say that we're well advanced in scheduling and timetabling for 2025, largely thanks to the diligence and creativity of John Mitchell and Chris Lynch and others. We expect to be in a position to publish a complete 2025 school calendar at some stage early in Term 4. Last week our students competed in the Associated Catholic Colleges cross-country event at Bundura Park. We finished third in Division 1 behind St Bede's and St Bernard's. We were second in the intermediate aggregate and third in both the junior and senior aggregates. Congratulations to all those who represented the college, in particular those who achieved podium results. That is Hunter MacArthur who was third in under 13, Billy Blake first in under 14, Otis Jones second in under 17 and Bailey Wilson who was third in the senior division. This week we've had the pleasure of playing host to 24 Italian students and their teachers from our new sister school, Instituto San Giovanni Bosco in Colle de Val Delsa, located in the picturesque region of Tuscany, Italy. We've been lucky enough to develop a relationship with the school together with Sacred Heart and have signed a memorandum of understanding which allows for reciprocal school visits for students from both schools. And as you can tell from my pronunciation, I never learnt Italian. A group of senior St Joseph's and Sacred Heart students of Italian, though, will be the first to visit the school in Italy on the Italian immersion trip in April 2025. The Italian students and their teachers were really grateful for their time here, loved attending classes and learning more about Geelong and Melbourne and Sydney during their stay. Thank you to all the families who hosted a student as well as the staff and students who made them feel welcome here. Your hospitality is very much appreciated. Last week, the college hosted our second model United Nations General Assembly, hosting students from about a dozen schools across Melbourne and the Geelong region. With assistance from a career diplomat and the United Nations Association of Australia, teams worked in the same way as the UN General Assembly to try and solve the issue of modern slavery. In a time where so much of our world is in chaos, with so many living in poverty and the clutches of exploitation, it was terrific to see the next generation developing the skills to address this issue, something which my generation has failed to do adequately. In the previous newsletter, I announced Charlie Meadows as our 2025 school captain-elect with Deputy Captains Carway Kamina and Harris Henderson. In today's newsletter, I'm joined by Charlie and 2024 College Captain Michael Ahern. Michael will reflect on some of the achievements of 2024 and Charlie's agreed to provide us with some insight into the leadership team's goals for 2025. Hello everyone. This year we have been able to continue our involvement in various initiatives. Our main event this year was the annual Winter Ball, this year raising money for Hope Bereavement Care and the Zoe Kennedy Foundation. Supported by an attendance of over 750 Year 12 students, we raised a record amount of over $18,000, contributing to the vital work that both of these charities do within our community. We have also continued to support mental health initiatives, such as the Push Up Challenge, and our involvement in the annual Red Cross Blood Drive. As college captains, we have also had the incredible opportunity to be involved in old collegiate events, including the Remembrance Mass and various reunions. 
Being able to speak with past SJC students and hear about their stories of the college has been an incredible opportunity. We also attended the 500 Supporters Spring Club Spring Racing Lunch that financially supports the Rubin Centre in Nairobi, providing opportunities for further primary healthcare and education initiatives. The impact of this lunch has been an invaluable impact on the community in Nairobi. Jude, Kane and I have had an incredible time representing the college. We have been very lucky to have great support networks and many opportunities for, for us to get involved in the school life. As we finish up our leadership, it's an honour to introduce the 2025 College Captain, Charlie Meadows. Hello everyone. Leadership at St Joseph's College is a team effort and I'm really looking forward to working with Carway and Harris as well as the Touchstone and House Leaders to make the school year the best it can be for everyone in 2025. Our vision is to foster the school's culture while raising the importance of values such as empathy and gratitude. As St Joseph's College students, we have a lot to be thankful for and it's very important that we, that we give back and offer thanks to those that support us. As college captain, it is extremely important to me that our school is a place of inclusivity. It should be one where all community members look forward to coming in into school each day. We will continue to build on an environment where all students feel valued and are provided with opportunities both to thrive both in and out of the classroom. Our years at school should be about getting involved and giving everything a shot. Like anything else in life, the more you put in, the more you'll get out. As a leadership group, we would like to challenge everyone to take the opportunity next year to be a part of activities, fundraisers and celebrations at SJC. St Joseph's College is a safe and supportive environment that encourages everyone to be the best versions of themselves. Good luck to the current Year 12 cohort for their upcoming exams and final assessments. Thank you for everything you've done to make our school a special place. The Class of 2025 are extremely proud to be following in your footsteps. Thanks Michael and thanks Charlie. We're almost at the end of term, with this Friday, tomorrow, the final day of classes. We thank the following staff for their commitment to St Joseph's as they finish their current contracts. From the Learning Diversity Team, Freddie Drips, and from the Teaching Team, Eve Betts, Jet Matthews, Bethany Ha, Margot Davies, Dora Madigan, and Annie Burke. And of course, some of these will be returning in other roles in the future. We also wish those staff taking leave early next term well. From the support staff, Anthony Fitzgerald, Holly McIntosh and Marty Gilligan. And from the teaching staff, Connor Ganar and Tom Cashin. At the start of next term, we also welcome back from leave, Amy Young, Chris Conroy, Chrissy Rowland, Gemma Gray, Jerry O'Callaghan, Ben McDowell and Peter O'Connor. I've taken the opportunity to wish our Year 12 vocational major students well this week as they complete their final classes and I'm very proud that most of them are heading straight to apprenticeships or jobs. The two week holiday break is anything but a holiday of course for our VCE students preparing for exams. They have revision lectures and trial exams during the two week period but there's a payoff and that's a very, very long summer holiday. I hope you've enjoyed this newsletter, particularly meeting and hearing from Michael and Charlie. I wish you and your family a wonderful break and look forward to seeing all students back at school on Monday, October the 7th. God bless.